So very happy to be here and to talk about inner source portals and how Backstage is a powerful platform to, to build them. My name is Olivier Dusty. I'm founder and CTO of Avalia Systems, and I'm calling from Switzerland. So the, the talk is organized in uh, three parts. To set the context, I will start with what is the purpose of an inner source portal. I will then briefly introduce Backstage. And finally, I will discuss three themes that we have explored with our clients when building their portal on top of uh, Backstage. So the inner source portal pattern seeks to help both project contributors and project owners. And if you read the documentation, the pattern focuses on one key problem, which is the discoverability of projects in large organizations. But beyond this use case, there are other patterns that can be connected to an inner source portal. So one way to look at it is to say that a portal is a collaborative space through which we can deliver a range of use cases. Think about gig marketplace or praise participants. For these patterns, we have both information and features that can be delivered through the same portal. If you're not very familiar with the, the pattern, uh, you can have a look at the reference implementation that has been open sourced by SAP. It has already been presented uh, at previous inner source events by uh, Guilherme, who is uh, at uh, the, the conference uh, today. So if you look at this portal, it provides a user interface that displays a list of projects, but it also provides a process and a pipeline to collect metadata about the projects uh, from GitHub repositories. And as we will see, this is also a feature that is provided by Backstage just in a slightly different way. So inner source portals can start small, but they can evolve to become very rich. And so if we look at the problem space, it's very important to identify which personas we are trying to help and how. We may start with project owners and project contributors, but in our projects, we often also consider business stakeholders and sponsors. And in our session yesterday, Adi talked about communication with C-levels. A portal can support this uh, communication. In the solution space, we must then find ways to make our implementation efficient, and this is where Backstage comes in. And because it really is a development platform rather than a tool, it gives us a lot of flexibility to implement very diverse uh, use cases. Let me quickly uh, jump to a, to a demo to give you a sense of what is possible with Backstage. So what we see here, is the entry point of a portal built on top of uh, Backstage. What we see here is a list of high-level metrics, a news feed, and content aggregated from uh, different places. What we see is that we have personalization features. So I can look at the information from the point of view of an HR uh, manager, of a CFO, or of an engineer. And when I switch the persona, both the information that is presented and the way it is presented will vary. If I move to the ecosystem, people who are familiar with Backstage will recognize the, uh, uh, the uh, catalog uh, page. This is where we find the inventory of projects and teams, and we can get details about each of the projects and this includes documentation. So we have here documentation for the Excel, which is a project. This information, this page here, is actually the rendering of markdown documents that are stored in uh, Git repositories that have been fetched by uh, Backstage. I don't have to talk a lot about uh, other pages in the portal, but the key point is that Backstage is so flexible that we can create these content pages to talk about um, initiatives at the company. 
And I will talk about NACA GPT at the end of the, the session. So let me go back to the slide. Uh, so backstage is getting attention in the community. Uh, lots of people are talking about it, but some of you may not be familiar with it. So I'm going to give a very quick introduction. So the project was created at Spotify to deal with the challenges of a past growing tech organization. And discoverability was also one of the problems they wanted to address. Backstage has then been open sourced and it's now uh, managed by the CNCF. It's been widely adopted. They are talking about more than 2,000 organizations using uh, Backstage. So a key point is that Backstage is not a tool that you install and you configure. It really is a development platform. And you use this development platform to build your portals. So when you get started with Backstage, you actually scaffold a TypeScript application with a front end and a back end. And then to do the customization, you work at the code level. So this may seem a bit scary, but it gives you complete control. And for us, it was a strong selling point. In summary, you have here the core features of uh, Backstage. What you get is first a software catalog in which you ingest information about your projects, components, teams a system to publish the documentation written in Markdown files, a scaffolder to create new projects with a system of templates and actions, and last but not least, the plugin system. And this is what makes Backstage easy to extend. So the community provides plugins typically to interact with two chains, but you can create your own plugins. And this is what you need to implement the custom use cases that I was talking uh, about before. So out of the box, Backstage gives you something that is quite close to the SAP reference implementation. You get a process to search for projects, components, and metadata. You get a place to store the information, and you get a user interface to search and browse projects. But this is only the starting point. I'm now going to introduce three teams that we keep exploring when we do projects on top of Backstage. Revisit the UX, embrace model extensions, and be smart about content. Revisit the UX. So when you start with Backstage, you get a user interface that looks a bit like this. It's well organized, it's extensible, but you see that it really feels like a developer tool. And in the demo that I showed before, we had personas that would really get lost if this was their entry point into the, uh, the ecosystem. Another issue with this view, which shows the project in a list, in a table, is that it works well if you are searching for projects, but it does not work so well if you want to grasp the overall structure of the ecosystem and the relationships between the projects, the teams, and the domains. But more on this later. So the good news is that technically, backstage, a backstage instance is a TypeScript slash React application. So this means that with some work, you can turn the UX inside out. The standard approach is to add custom panels or tabs within backstage. We prefer to invert the flow. So we start from this broader collaborative web application, and then we embed backstage UI elements into this broader app. So in the demo, we have seen that the backstage catalog is available to users. It's just not the first thing that they see when they access the portal. Embrace model extensions. So one of the most interesting capabilities of Backstage is what they call the system model. When you use Backstage, you have to populate the catalog with entities. And there are different kinds of entities. You have components, you have teams, and others. You also define relations between entities. For instance, a team can be the owner of a system. And 
having this shared data model as a foundation for implementing different use cases is very powerful. Over time, you get really interesting insights from this structured information. The standard system model can be extended, but is it a good idea to create new entity kinds, new relations? And the answer is not always. And if you read the documentation, you will see that there are trade-offs to consider. In our engagements, to have this comprehensive and precise model is very important. So in our case, we often extend the standard model. Another aspect of modeling is to look at the metadata and the metrics that you can link to entities in the catalog. And to illustrate what this makes possible, I like to make the analogy to a GIS. You have the same world and you can look at the same world from different point of view. So if you have a map, you can use different layers to get different information about the same uh, the same map the same uh, the same world and with this idea what i like to say is that your inner soft portal can become the gis of your software ecosystem so here what we do is we use content stored in the backstage catalog and we generate interactive maps so in this example we display teams in the organization and in this first layer the color and the proximity of nodes indicates how tribes are composed of several squads. But we can then add other layers. And in this case, we look at the same entities. So again, it's the teams in the organizations, but we apply the coloring to show, to visualize the satisfaction in teams across the organization. And we could apply the same technique to show the level of activity in projects, the quality of components, or the business value created in different domains. So these kinds of maps are really helpful to understand the overall structure and the state of the ecosystem. And they are also very powerful communication tools, especially with non-technical people. This is how it looks like uh, in, uh, in, uh, in Backstage. And as you see, it is a plugin. So it's not a feature that is provided by Backstage out of the box, but it's something that we were able to develop because um, Backstage is, uh, is expensive. Last but not least, be smart about content. So designing and implementing a portal is not trivial. But when you release your portal, you really only have done one part of the job. So if the goal is to deliver this stream of content, insight, and stories, what's the effort to keep this stream alive? Who is going to produce the content and how? And there are different strategies that can be and that should be combined. One that we find interesting is to apply generative AI to software analytics. So the idea is not to build a chatbot within Backstage, but it's rather to implement asynchronous data pipelines where we use LLMs to get insights from software data and then to explain these insights to different personas. So to give you a sense of what is possible with tools like ChatGPT and LangChain, here is one example of a, of a pipeline. We start by using the GitHub API to extract data. So for instance, we extract the list of the last 100 issues open in a project, and we get that in a CSV file. We then go to ChatGPT and we ask the first question. Have a look at this data set what are interesting questions that you would like to ask if you wanted to assess the state of this project? ChatGPT is going to come back with five interesting questions. We then go back to uh, ChatGPT and for each question we ask, imagine that you have a Python interpreter, what is the code that you would write, execute on the CSV file, to get the answer. We execute the code on the CSV file that we have extracted. 
So we get the answers. And in the last iteration, we go back to ChatGPT one last time and we ask, okay, so now that you have the, um, the, uh, the answers to your uh, question, please tell me a story, write me a, su uh, a, a summary that will make sense for a specific person. So we get this content and that's the content that we can then publish and feed through the, the, the portal. So this keeps the, the, the stream alive and interesting without too much effort. So of course, it's not that easy and you need um, some, uh, so, some work to get it done. So for reference, you have here the questions that have been generated and coming to uh, the end of the, the, the session, the work that I've presented is available uh, in DXUB, which is our open source layer on top of uh, Backstage. And this is also where we uh, plan to publish um, plugins um, in, the, in the, the future. So we're more than happy to, um, to chat and to collaborate with people to, uh, to, to continue to explore these, uh, these domains.